Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. In my last video I built this setup using my shop press that allows me to test tensile strength, and today I'm going to do some testing on some of the metals that I've used in other projects. For each sample I want to test, I turn down a sample like this to a known diameter, I put it in the machine, and then record the PSI that it takes to break it. So this is a piece of stock that I poured in my Can You Machine Bullet Brass video, and I'm going to make a test sample out of this, and then we will check the tensile strength of it. Yeah, that's running fairly true, so I'm going to turn this down and then I'll flip it around. All right, so that's the overall length. Now I need to make a couple other reference marks. Three quarter of an inch and an inch and a quarter. So now I need to turn this center portion here down to quarter inch. And I use this cutter so it makes a nice chamfer in each direction. And, uh, and I just plunge it in slowly. I actually feed horizontal while I'm plunging. Uh, it goes easier that way. So let's go back up on our speed. This is 800 RPM. You can tell I'm getting hot because my die chems changed colors. And so far, just going by eye, I can tell I'm still still got a ways to go, but. Let's see how much. So I'm at 395. And I gotta get to 250. So let's go another 100. Just barely have enough room for the micrometer in there, so I'm gonna have to widen out a little bit. And I've got 277, so I need to go 27 more. Nope, I got 251. Two forty-nine and a half. and a half. I'll take it. Alright, so now I can take the center off. Bring it out just a little bit. And part it off. Leave myself a little extra there. Doesn't have to be perfect. And let's slow down. Go into 270 RPM. All right, so over to the mill. I lay this piece of uh, scrap down so that I can drill and not worry about going through and hitting my vise. And then I want it hanging out just a little bit. And now I need to edge fine so that I can get right in the middle and then I need to find the end so that I know where to drill in that axis. Half 
fence, so I come over 250. Right there, and I zero again. So now I'm pointing right at the edge. This is about three quarters of an inch, so I'm gonna go in 375, which is half of that. And that's gonna be where I do my first hole. I'll put a big center drill in there that I can reach down far enough with. So now that's where that piece of metal comes in underneath. Because it's steel, I'm going to feel that when I hit it. Yeah, I can go ahead and drill here, and when I feel that I'm all the way through, I can just stop and I don't hit my vise. So this is 670 RPM. So that looks like a good test piece. I don't see, uh, I don't see any voids in there. So this will be interesting. I'm going to check this. This is a, uh, it's an auto part. I don't know what it is. Some, some type of uh, attachment arm or something. Uh, and it's aluminum. So this was professionally cast as high a quality as I'd ever be able to obtain. And, and certainly higher quality than what I've been doing so far. I'm going to cut it like here and here, mount it in the lathe and, and get a, a test piece out of that. And then we'll see how much tensile strength a professionally cast piece of aluminum can hold. So with a big interrupted cut like this, I'm going to use a piece of uh, high-speed steel. I haven't done a whole lot yet. I think I'm going to quit fooling with this. I just need to get a round area so then I can turn around. Oh boy, I'm not even on that jaw. That doesn't look real good. That doesn't look real good. Oh my lord, stop! Holy moly! That went quick. So that is what we would call a fail. You know, that was really dumb. I knew I should have gotten the four jaw out, and I didn't. That was just being stupid lazy. Believe it or not, I think the piece is still okay. Let's get the four jaw chuck out. When will I learn? Cutting corners and machining just don't mix. That is going to do it. There you can see how it's being held between those two shackles. We are all set. Really doesn't take long to do the testing. It's just a matter of making the, uh, the piece. Going really slow. And the gauge is starting to move. Sweet, it's doing pretty well. Mm, is it yielding? I think so. It elongated quite a bit before it broke, and uh, I was up at I was up at six six to seven hundred psi. I think I'm pretty happy with that. I did not treat this metal at all. I didn't degas it. I didn't flux it. I didn't do anything. I just melted it and poured it. So I would, I would say this is probably the weakest and most brittle state that it really can be in, unless you deliberately work hardened it before you tested it. It held some tensile strength, so that's cool. 
All right, I've got three aluminum samples here to check. So this was aluminum foil. I did absolutely nothing. I melted it and I poured it. I didn't degas. I didn't do anything. And it turned out surprisingly tough when I when I shot it. And then this is the alloy that I used in my AR-15 from aluminum cans. So aluminum can is a, is a specific alloy, and I did degas this. Should be pretty good casting. This is a turned down piece of an auto part. There's no voids on the professional one. There's no voids that I can see on the can, and I see many voids in this aluminum foil one. In fact, the first time I turned this down, there were too many voids in the area where we were testing, so I threw it away and, and did a different one. So I think this one's gonna break the easiest, so let's do that first. Oh. Well, I think that answers that question. I was just putting a little bit of tension on it in order to, uh, to test it and it broke. Well, so the foil is worthless. No surprise. Let's check out my aluminum can. I'm a little nervous. I hope this is going to be a, a better test. Pressure gauge is going up. Good sign. So that's 600 right there. Six fifty. No, that was seven hundred actually. Eight hundred. And there you have it. Let's see how the commercial one does. Six hundred. 800, 1,000, 1,200, 13, 14, wow, 15, like I need to hide under a blanket. Man, I did not expect this. Jeez. Bending my drill rod. What was that, like 2200? Check out what it did to my press. That's why I put a wire on that because I didn't want that getting thrown onto the floor. So there's the, uh, the aluminum foil. Really rough, grainy, not strong at all. Here's what I used on my AR-15 lower, the aluminum can. Uh, I degassed this, so I'm sure that helped some. And uh, you know, it held a fair amount. 6061 and you can see it, it elongated more and it's grainy but not quite as rough in there compared to the the other one this is the bullet brass now interestingly this one had no treatment I didn't degas I didn't do anything to this so I would say brass is a lot more forgiving because this was pretty strong and it elongated quite a bit so still pliable Here's the, uh, the one that I turned down out of, a, out of an auto part. The car accident happens if something like this breaks unexpectedly. So the engineering on these, these are probably about as good as you're going to get for aluminum. I might be wrong there. It's not aircraft, so yeah, maybe it could get better. But the point being, this is high quality stuff. If you look inside there, it is hardly rough at all. It's actually very smooth. You have to look very close to see any grains. Very uniform, really impressive. And you can see what it did to the drill rod that was supporting it. It just bent. And I actually had to cut 
this one to get it out of the shackle. There's what uh, what a good cast material does versus uh, aluminum foil cast without any care. Pretty big difference. They both look about the same on the outside. Not so much. So cool, I'm glad I did that. This is going to help me uh, take my metalworking to the next level. I can pour little test ingots when I do a melt and I can check and see how strong it is. Uh, I can do some tests and see, you know, if degassing helps the tensile strength, if flux helps the tensile strength, adding additives, you know, adding a little bit, this probably has silicon in it, a lot of different things. And of course this stuff's all been worked out, but it, it's not readily available for the do-it-yourselfers. I've looked and, uh, you know, you find bits and pieces here and there, but uh, it's fun to figure it out yourself and, and do some tests. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Mm -hmm.